students. Good morning, ma'am. Okay, take your seat. Thank you, ma'am. How are you today? Have you eaten your breakfast? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I can really see it in your faces. You are all handsome and beautiful. Yes. So, meaning you're ready for the lesson this morning. Yes, yes ma'am. Very good. Now, the first is we are going to Sing with the singer the song Small Dream. If you like to sing, sing with me. Have you formed 
in your mind any image from the song? Does anybody have in their mind what is the idea of the song? What can I understand in that song is when you're still alive, be in good manners, be a god, live well, dream small, keep hoping, keep praying, because life is too short to make it all. Make a simple moment to change the world. Thank you. Okay, very nice answer. The world, while living on earth, we should always have to consider best of ourselves. That is the image being formed by one of you. And then, why you need to dream small? Is the meaning really for you is to dream only very small dream? Again? No. So right, it's no. What is the meaning of by saying dream small? Whom you are going to put your trust? In God. Okay, you put your trust in God. And that makes you your dream big. Not trusting yourself, but trusting, putting your trust in the Lord. Why we should trust God in our lives? Why we should trust God in our lives? Yes. Because it is God who strengthens us, us all, and without God, we are nothing. Precise answer. It is because God gave us everything in life, including our life. Now, what do you mean by live well? Live well. Many times it was repeated that we should live well. What does living well mean? Anybody who raised the hand? Yes. We need to live well because life is certain. A life is uncertain, but death is certain. So we need to live our life to the fullest. Okay, so live a meaningful life while we are still living on earth. The question is, how meaningful is your life to your family, to your friends, and to people around you? Did their, your life, did you find it meaningful? You are going to answer that as we are going to continue with our lesson this morning. Our lesson this morning is we will be talking about a poem, Death Be Not Proud. Okay, please read with the author or the poet, or the presenter, I mean. Okay, that is an example of a holy sonnet that we will be discussing this morning and you are going to roam around, we'll have a carousel strategy. So if you have noticed, there are stations here around your classroom. So near the station where you are, that will be your first station and then you move to the next by counter. Okay? Until you go back to your station. Once you are there in your station, you are now going to discuss the expected performance. I have here questions in the board. First, for the lecturer, may I see where are you? Lecturer's group. Okay, so you are there. Your question to answer, yes. 
can you explain concisely the sonnet, Italian and English sonnet? You are going to differentiate what is Italian from English sonnet. The expected outcomes is you are going to have lecture. Lecture your classmate, explain to your classmate the sonnet and the Italian and English sonnet. Then the interviewers group, where are you? Okay, there you are. The question is, what are your questions about the life of John Doan, the author? You are going to the expected outcome is you are going to have meet the author activity. Imagine that you are going to interview John Doan in your television show. Ask three or four questions about his life, two from the interviewer and the other two is from the audience. The questions which you want more to know about John Doan as the point. Then, the artist group, where are you? Ah, okay, there you are. So, the question, how personification contributes to the sense of victory or triumph over death? As we discussed before, we are discussing about personification, uh, imagery, assonance and consonance as elements of poetry. So we are going to apply that this morning. Then your expected output is you are going to draw or sketch a personification in the poem. Then you are going to explain it in the class. Next is the Reader's Theater Group. Raise your hand. So there. The question, what image or symbol is there in a poem? And read the lines that support your answer. In Reader's Theater Form, the expected outcome is you're going to deliver six lines only in the class. Then, actions group. These are the actors and the actresses. How the theme can be applied to our day-to-day -day life. Then, the expected outcome is a role play of the theme or the moral lesson that you get from the poem. So, everybody stand up, bring with you your notebook, a book pen, and then take down notes what are the important things that you read while you are roaming around. Okay, move to your station one, or your station where you are. Once I said move, then you move to the next station. I will give you only three minutes in reading. Okay, move. Move now. Next station, please. Then you move to the next station. And then you are home now in your station. A lucky one. Okay, continue. One station more. is you are going to discuss based on the information you got there from all stations and then prepare 
for your expected outcomes as, as given earlier. Okay? Collaborate, discuss, act of practice, decide what to do and how to present all the activities or the expected outcome. For 10 minutes only. Okay, you can move. If you are going to practice, then stand up. If you are going to prepare for your presentation, then you can move the chair, you can roam around. Structure. And it 
particularly focuses on topics with our which are love and passages of time. So there are two basic types of sonnets, which are English sonnet and Italian sonnet. English sonnet is also called a Shakespearean sonnet. It follows the pattern ABAB, which means it rhymes at the B part. And it has 10 syllables. Not only that, um, syllables, if you don't know, syllables are a unit of pronunciation having one vowel sound. So not only it has 10 syllables, but it also has to have a loud or soft pattern in order to require as an English sonnet. The next type, I'm Carla Jury, Collegado, by the way. The next type of sonnet is the Italian sonnet, or also known as the Petrarchan sonnet. The Petrarchan sonnet is named after a, after a, after an Italian poet in the 14th century whose name is Francesco Petrarch. In Petrarchan sonnet, this, this type of sonnet has 14 lines and two stanzas. The first stanza is the octave. The octave consists the first eight lines that follow the specific rhyme scheme A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A. The octave gives the reader the subject of the poem, often an argument, observation, or even a question. The, the second the second stanza is the sistet. The sistet consists of the last six lines, which usually follows the most frequently CD, CD, CD rhyme scheme. The sistet then works to make a change to the subject or the solution. The contrast at line nine is called the volta. Um, I'm my cluster and I will, I will do, do uh, discuss about the Death Be Not Proud by John Doe. The Death Be Not Proud finish, finishes slightly differently. It does six lines or CD, CD, D, C, A, A. For, for example, I 13 as a word near the end. Swells that rhymes with well and well in the, in the previous two lines. It just sticks, it just sticks around the middle of the verse very strange. And the death be not proud is also called, called the Holy Son. Very good and give them ten round of applause. Okay, it is round, meaning you are going to clap by round. Next! Oh, this morning you are going to witness the visitation in your classroom, Grade 9 Taiwan. The poet Chan Do. Our guest for today was an English poet and cleric in the Church of England. He is considered the preeminent representative of the metaphysical poets. His works are noted for their strong, sensual style and enjoyed science. Love poems, religious poems, Latin translations, epigrams, elegies, songs, satires, and sermons. Let us all welcome John Doe. about everything. 
Um, I have here is a question for you. So, what makes you? What questions do you ask yourself? Do you ask yourself before writing? So you want to be a future writer, right? Yes. Before I start writing a story, I ask myself questions about the concept of the story. Not having a good concept of the story. Thank you so much, Mr. Chanto. Wow, I like it. interviewer group and I hope you enjoy the team with the boy John Ho. Next is the artist group. We will see what drawing they have or sketch they have. <laughs> Good morning everyone. Standing in front of you all is the artist group and I am Sarah. This is Kenji, Roland, this beautiful lady here, Miss Jana, and of course last but not the least Henry. So we are going to explain about what we have illustrated as you can see here on the drawing. So let's start. So about the poem, Let Be Not Proud, we have drawn this illustration in front of you all. As you can see, people are entering the gate in heaven. Now in our opinion, that cannot do us. We may be dead, but we are always sleeping for a short period of time and we wake up eternally. Then we may believe that he has defeated those who die, but that states those people do not truly die because their souls live on in an afterlife. People who die are only dead momentarily, then they live along with all spirits in heaven. So, death be not proud. We will die no more, no more pain, problems, and suffering to this world. We will live eternally and happily to the new Jerusalem that God prepared for us where there will be no more night, no more tears, never crying again. We will meet in heaven and we will join hands together and sing songs together in heaven. And that will be all. Thank you. Okay, now we go next. The Theater's Leaders Group. Make sure and give them, did you give them 10 clap hands? Another 10 for them. So good morning everyone, we are the Readers Theatre Group and we are here in front of you for two purposes. First is to answer the question that has been given to us, how's, what image or symbol is there in a poem and read the lines that we have to answer. And second is to perform our selected six lines that describes the topic. So but, but as for now, we would like to answer first the question as I said earlier. So the question is, what image or symbol is there in a poem and read the lines that support your answer. So, answer is, death is very sad, very lonely, death has much pleasure in it. So don't try to waste your life and be it. So for now, we would like to perform our performance. One, four, three, go. Dead, be not proud. Mighty and dreadful. For thou art not so. Die not, die not, die not. For it is so painful. Oh, poor oh, death. Nor yet canst thou keep me. Much pleasure, much pleasure, much pleasure. Then from thee much more must flow. 
Thou art slave to faith. Slave to faith. Ah, uh, uh, we are slave to faith. Chance. Kings. Desperate, desperate, desperate. Desperate men. And thus be poison. War. Ching, 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 ching. One shot sleep past. One shot sleep past. We wake. Ether. 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 We wake eternally. And death shall be no more. Death, no shall die. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> The action group, the team, um, the ball. <laughs> I'm glad I'm fine to all of you. I'm here in front of you to show or to act a role play about Dad being a proud. With a team of dreams, hopes, and plans. The big dream in hope in the story is to defend death and go to heaven. The speaker is confident that his faith in God won't let him down. But that's the thing about faith. And now we will start. <laughs>
Zafi B. All.